Hi, this is Tom Alston from Aero Marine Tax Professionals, and today I'm talking to Robert De Laurentiis uh, about his pole-to-pole -pole flight, and uh, he's got a current book on Amazon called The Zen Pilot, and uh, we hope in the next few minutes to explain to you or give him the opportunity to explain to you exactly what he is doing and uh, you, how you can get involved with what he is doing. So. Let's start out, Robert, a little bit with, one, in your own words, tell me what your goal is or what you're trying to accomplish with your 2018 Pole to Pole adventure. Hi, Tom. Um, and it's great to be on your show. Thank you for the opportunity to chat about the 2018 South Pole to North Pole trip. You know, there are many things we hope to accomplish on the trip. One of them is quite simply, you know, getting a general aviation aircraft, modifying it, and extending its performance so that we can safely and successfully connect the South Pole and the North Pole. And, um, you know, we're carrying along some aviation technology that's the latest, greatest of, of the time. And that's everything from a very advanced avionics panel with synthetic vision, uh, Bluetooth, satellite weather, music, communications, and, um, you know, touchscreen GPSs that are uh, more advanced than a lot of commercial planes are flying with. Uh, the synthetic vision, you know, helps us in zero visibility, and right now we're talking to Astronics Max Viz about installing an infrared camera in the plane. Beyond that, MT Propeller has generously donated some five-bladed nickel-tip composite scimitar, it's a mouthful, propellers, and they're going to help us up at 35,000 feet, you know, flying um, as efficiently and quickly as we can. Uh, the engines, the uh, TPE, the Honeywell TPE 331-10Ts will be almost brand new with uh, some new components that they're putting into them now. So, you know, taking that aircraft and sending it around the world is really a way to inspire and connect people around the planet. And my goal is really to connect the South Pole to the North Pole and everybody in between. We'll be carrying some scientific experiments for NASA, uh, actually four of them, which will later be carried by the uh, Amazon's Blue Origin rocket. And that's everything from a humanity chip to uh, some elements of their experiment that will help them propel miniature spaceships out into outer space on laser beams at a quarter of the speed of light. There's some discussion about laser communications. And uh, one of the more interesting parts of it, too, is we're going to be carrying C. elegans, which are little organisms that survived the 2003 space shuttle explosion. And they're impervious to radiation, extreme heat, the elements out in outer space, many chemicals, and it's, it's just really cool technology. And a lot of the experiments have been designed by kids. Awesome. Awesome. Now, even though you and I have been acquaintances and friends and you've been a client of my tax service for years, I'm going to ask you some questions that I know the answer to, but I think the audience will be interested in your answers. And my first one is, what makes you decide or make you feel like you're qualified to make these kind of trips? Have you ever done something like this before? You know, really my ambition started when I first started to fly, Tom. When I got my VFR license, I think by the next week I was flying between three different states. And eventually I'd go on to get my IFR license and then start going outside the United States. I crossed uh, the North Atlantic when I had three years of uh, flight time in my plane, which was the Spirit of San Diego at the time. And then, you know, I just felt like I had gone uh, a distance that if I had not just returned to my home base of San Diego, I could have kept going and made it all the way around the world. So uh, what are my qualifications? I would just say uh, experience and ambition and uh, maybe a little bit of adventure. Got it. Got it. Um, I think you've already answered this. It was a question I had for you, and I was going to ask you this. If you've already answered, just say, I think I've already answered this. What is the scientific significance of this flight? 
The scientific uh, significance is that NASA is trying to get out into outer space and take people you know, much greater distances away from the planet. And in doing that, they need to develop these laser communication um, techniques. They need to see how human beings will uh, survive in outer space and taking a living organism like the C. elegans and taking it you know, further out um, gives them valuable information. Now, certainly, I'm not going into outer space. I'll be in the tropopause. But seeing how those organisms react on a flight from the South Pole to the North Pole is great for them in preparing for their deeper space missions. And the other thing that I uh, mentioned just briefly was that they're reducing the size of the spacecraft that they're building. And they hope at some point to get them to the size of just a small circuit board. And with that, they can propel that circuit board into outer space on a, the end of a laser beam at a quarter of the speed of light. Awesome. Awesome. So why should people other than you and your sponsors care about this trip? Well, it shows what's possible, really. You know, we're taking a general aviation plane, the uh, Gulfstream Turbine Commander 900 that's been around since 1983. We're upgrading it with the latest propellers, engines, and avionics that are available today. And we're connecting the continents. You know, we're connecting the ends of the planet. And I've only been flying for about seven years. So it shows that, you know, these things are not impossible for people out there. And, you know, my first book called Flying Through Life is a lot about going after your impossibly big dreams. And Got in it. that book, you know, I talk about creating the resources of time and money so that people can get to this point, you know, with the help of their sponsors, of course, and, you know, go after those impossibly big dreams. And they don't necessarily have to be flying dreams. You know, they can be business business goals. They can relate to climbing mountains, losing weight, learning languages, any number of things. Are you going to be alone in the aircraft on this trip? <laughs> um, hopefully not for all of it. Um, right now, we're reaching out to different uh, sponsors and organizations and offering to sell different legs of the trip and name those legs after you know the individual companies or people. Got it. Um, that doesn't include the route to the South Pole. I'll probably do that by myself. Okay. One, for weight considerations, and two, because the risk is enormous, and I really wouldn't want to subject somebody else to that. Got it. Got it. Who else can get involved with you on this trip, and how? You know, anybody can really get involved. We're going to be doing some crowdfunding uh, so people, you know, maybe want to get some information or DNA or songs, music, whatever, um, on the humanity chip. There's going to be an opportunity for that. I've had individuals come out and offer, you know, sponsorship money for the trip. Uh, also, certainly some of the big aviation companies, everybody from, you know, Jeppesen, Honeywell, MT, Lightspeed. We have about 40 sponsors now, but we definitely need more. Got it. Got it. Can kids get involved? You know, I'm hoping that they can get involved. As we start to navigate these scientific experiments, um, we're going to involve the kids in that process. And certainly, you know, whatever they want to put out into outer space can go on that humanity chip, whether right. it's physically, you know, their DNA or their ideas. It'll be something that represents the entire world that can be placed, you know, on those chips and sent out into outer space. When do you plan on actually getting in your aircraft and starting this trip? What's the target date? What, tell me, give me kind of a sequential thing, kind of a date where you plan to be at certain legs of the trip and those kinds of things so that the people who are listening can kind of get an idea of the amount of time it took to prepare for it and the amount of time that you plan to be on this trip. And what are you going to do? <laughs> Those are a lot of questions. Yes, there. Um, I have an astrophysicist um, who's part of the advisory team, and he's told me I need to be over the South Pole January 1st, 2019. Okay. So I'll depart San Diego December 15th-ish, 2018, and start making my way down to Punta Arenas, Chile. Now, I'll certainly stop a few times on the way down there, 
but okay. the, the real critical departure point is Punta Arenas, and from there, it's direct to the South Pole and then back to King George Island, which is only about 600 nautical miles south of Punta Arenas. And the idea there is if we need fuel, then I'll fuel up. I certainly want to touch foot on the continent of Antarctica. And then we'll head up towards uh, Brazil over to uh, Western Africa and then head up towards Europe and over the top. Now, you know, I'm not giving you a lot of specifics in terms of route, and it really is not that critical at this point because we know the hardest leg of the trip is the Antarctic leg. And on my last circumnavigation in 2015 in the spirit of San Diego, I left the last leg um, to be the Honolulu to Monterey, which was the hardest leg of the trip. And in hindsight, it would have been nice to have that under my belt early so I wouldn't have to worry about it. So we're basically going after the hardest part of the trip in the beginning and then, you know, taking it a little easier, stopping to lecture, meeting people along the way, and slowing the pace down so that we cross the North Pole probably two to three months later. So it's not an attempt to circumnavigate the globe in a north-south direction in a speedy manner. It's a, you're, you have things planned to do, events along the way. Yes, that's a great point. Um, you know, the amount of resources that go into a trip like this, the year and a half of planning, it I think would be a waste to just try and do it as fast as you can. You know, life happens a little slower than that, and it's partially to show people that it's okay to enjoy the journey. And uh, I'm hoping to stop, you know, many times along the way and lecture uh, to show off the plane, because I'm so proud of it, um, the citizen of the world, and meet some people and have a great experience myself. And, you know, it's, it's great exposure because all eyes are on you when you're doing a trip like this. We found that on the first equatorial circumnavigation. So we want to get the most, most out of it for our sponsors, for my enjoyment, and to help you know, make this a global peace mission connecting everyone on the planet. Tell me a little bit about your equatorial circumnavigation, where you started, where you ended, and how long you were, and where you stopped, and those kind of things. Yeah, you know, the equatorial circumnavigation in uh, 2015 is the uh, topic of the book Zen Pilot, Flight of Passion, and the Journey Within. It was is that, is that book still in print? Yes, it's actually number one on Amazon after a year in the airports category. We put it out um, in a few different categories, but it's still definitely available. Um, and on that trip, you know, I stopped in about 23 different countries, and I pretty much followed the equator, okay. which most people do if they're going to do a circumnavigation. And, you know, I stopped in places like uh, Kiribati that I had never heard of, uh, Noumea, New Caledonia, uh, other ones like Jakarta, Indonesia, and Nagpur, India, of course, people have heard of. But, um, you know, it, it ended up being three months and eight days because of the engine failure over the Strait of Malacca at 14,000 feet. The Spirit of San Diego is a uh, Malibu Mirage with just a single engine. So at that point of engine failure is actually where the book starts. And it is one amazing adrenaline trip if you're into that sort of book. And the joke that I make about it is that if you cheat death once, you're lucky. If you cheat death twice, you're really lucky. And if you cheat it six times, you need a better explanation. <laughs> and that's kind of what the book's about. And, you know, a lot of people, a lot of aviators write about how to be a better pilot. What I've written about in Zen Pilot and Flying Through Life is the lessons that we learn from flying that improve our lives and when our lives improve, we become better pilots as well. Okay. And is there anything else you'd like to tell the audience? Make sure that you reach out to them in a way, give them a way to reach back to you, make sure that you give them your website name and address and that stuff. Okay. Well, the best way to get a hold of us, the team, or me is the website, and that's uh, www flying, which is F-L-Y-I-N-G, through, and that's the tricky part, T-H-R-U, life.com. Or if you type in Zen Pilot, you're probably going to get there pretty quickly as well. 
And on that home page, you'll see 2018 pull to pull flight. And if you hit that button, you're going to get hours worth of reading, pictures, links. We've really focused our time and energy on making that website uh, an, an opportunity for people to have all their questions answered. So uh, it's really a wonderful resource for anybody who wants to get involved, follow the trip. And I presume and, there's a way for them to reach out to you personally on that website? Yeah, there sure is. Um, okay. One other opportunity would be just sending me an email, which is robert at flying through, again spelled T-H-R-U, life.com. And that's their direct connection to me. But that information is also on the website. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, good luck on your trip, and uh, we'll do this again sometime. Maybe when you get back or maybe while you're out on the trip, we'll do another audio broadcast of this. Yeah, you know, and Tom, I want to thank you and your staff that have helped me on my two airplanes that have been used. Uh, you know, first the uh, Spirit of San Diego for the equatorial circumnavigation, and now the citizen of the world. Um, most people don't realize, you know, the amount of energy and planning that goes into uh, getting an airplane ready to do a trip like this. And, you know, one of the critical components is locating it, purchasing it, you know, reducing your expenses in that process, and, uh, you know, then going on to your next hurdle. And you guys have really, really helped me a lot in that process. So thank you and thank all the other sponsors for their help. Glad to help. And that's the end of this interview. Thanks, Tom.